Play it on Xbox One. Hello and welcome to the Playground Games live stream coming to you live from right here in Leamington Spa. This update we're going to be talking to you about all the awesome stuff coming to you in the Series 18 update to Forza Horizon 4. I'm Mike Brown and joining me on the show today is none other than Playground Games car content dynamics <laughs> whatever your job title is it's chris phillips good to see you mike yeah good to see you man what have you been playing lately uh so over christmas i played uh portal bridge constructor which is weirdly very addictive and i did get all the way through that which took me like four days and uh overcooked 2 which did start arguments overcooked 2 yes yeah. uh yeah i can i, I can relate i've so been playing <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've actually been playing a unofficial knockoff version of Overcooked inside Roblox with my son, uh, which is all the, all the fun of Overcooked, but with loads of my bugs. It just makes it even more fun. <laughs> uh, also joining us today is game designer, Mr. Matt Pickering. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? I like your job title. It's much easier for me to remember what it is. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been playing lately, Matt? Uh, yeah, over Christmas, I picked up Satisfactory on the Epic Game Store and uh, Transport Fever and Steep as well. Oh, steep. Yeah. The uh, Ubi skateboarding. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's a pretty mad game, that, isn't it? It's, it's very good. <laughs> so I've been enjoying that. And what was the Factor? Uh, what? Satisfactory, yeah. It's a bit like Factorio. Okay. Um, and a bit like Outer Worlds, Minecraft, No Man's Sky, all blended together. It's, uh, it's a good game. Cool. Should we take a look at what is coming up on today's show? Right, first of all, we are going to take a look at the festival playlist, so you guys will be able to get a look at all the new content coming in the Series 18 update. You'll get a picture of uh, the new events, as well as your first glimpse at what new cars are coming in this update. We're going to follow that up by taking a look at one of those pieces of content, which is the Showcase Remix, a brand new Showcase Remix coming in this update. We're then going to take a quick, uh, beautiful fo photo-based interlude, where we will take a look at all the photos you guys have submitted to our challenge on Twitter. We're then going to have a discussion about Eliminator. We'll take a look back at the last month and what's going on in Eliminator and talk about some of the new stuff that you're going to see changing in this update and maybe even those coming forward in the future. Then we have a brand new section that we are calling Alimi Q&A Tour. Um, <coughs> this is a new section where we will be grabbing a random person from the office floor, pulling them down, putting them in this seat, uh, and they will attempt to play a live game of multiplayer Eliminator against potentially you guys, if you happen to be playing at the moment, and I will be firing questions at them about themselves, their life, their job, and they have to both try and not get eliminated from the game and also answer my questions in a fun and interesting way so that it makes great content for you guys watching. It could so be a really short segment. It could be a very short section. It could be a boring section. Uh, we'll find out <laughs> later on in today's show. Um, we will follow that up with another uh, photo interlude uh, just because you guys submitted so many photos to this one that we had to do two, two little sections for it. Uh, we're then going to take a look at the brand new cars coming this update, which I know is uh, what most of you are here for. And finally, if we have time, and this will probably be, depend on how well we do in a Limi Q&A tour, um, <laughs> we will also do a Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, uh, go into the Mixer chat and say, hey, Tom, followed by your question. And if we've got time at the end, we'll jump through those and give you all the best answers we can. Uh, and, and after that, do not go anywhere, because coming up right after today's show is the Forza Monthly coming live from Seattle with two very special guests. That is me and Chris on there by, uh, via the medium of Skype. Uh, I believe there is also a really special guest. I think Alan Hartman, uh, the boss of all things Forza, is on the show today as well. So. Wow. Yeah, that Stay is a wow, isn't that. it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, he, if, he, if he's coming on, there must be something cool going on. So I think that's all we can say. Mm. Um, all right, Mr. Pickers, shall we take a look at what's in the festival sure. playlist? Shall we bring up the game on the screen? There we go. OK, I'll do a quick whistle stop tour of uh, Series 18 festival playlist. Uh, Series 18 was put together by our new designers, Matt and Anna. And uh, I'm going to focus on our, oh, I'm in spring. I'm going to focus on our new and exclusive cars. Um, so our first one that you will find is in a championship called Shummer Knights, uh, where you can get the open top um, version of the Hummer H1 Alpha. What is um, a Shummer? I don't know. Uh, ask Matt. <laughs> <laughs> he named this championship. I think he's gone Summer and Hummer blended together. That's what what he was going. Oh, for it's there. a pun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Good job, Matt. Um, Cool. He's probably watching upstairs, so he'll appreciate the shout out. <laughs> uh, in autumn, 
for completing 50% of uh, the festival playlist this week, you'll be able to grab the, the Lamb Lamborghini uh, Huracan Performante, which is the rival to the 488 Pista. Um, nice. Look forward to the deep dive on that. So, yeah, so this is a heavily requested car, that to one. say the least. Yeah. yeah. And I'll just scan through here so you guys can see what else is in there. But then we'll go over to winter, where our next exclusive car is the Porsche. 356C, the Emery Special, um, which are custom built, I think, their owners, aren't they? Yeah. There are no two Emery Specials are alike. Um, and then, what else have we got? Uh, oh, wow, you can win the Jazzy Cowboy hat. Yeah, that is something you can get in this <laughs> in this series. In spring, we have the um, the Showcase Remix, a new one, uh, Taxi for Takeoff, where you'll be racing Aisha's Taxi against the Delta Wing. Uh, we tested it earlier, that's why it's already completed. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt revealing that despite how it may appear, we do actually sometimes do a rehearsal of this show. <laughs> <laughs> and then our last but not least car, um, even though the championship is called Is That a Supra, uh, you'll be racing in the Supra, that's the, that's the, uh, the connection there, but you'll be winning the A86, the Toyota uh, Truno Sprinter, um, which is an absolute meme machine. And we've got a whole set of car masteries for that car that reference its, uh, its stardom in initial D. Yep. Um, so let's, uh, should we take a look at that showcase remix? I think that's a great shout, yeah. And oh, we're in just about the right location to do it as well. Convenient. And if one of our tech guys could press a button on the remote, that big monitor is about to go to sleep. That won't help <laughs> um, <laughs> racing in this showcase. But I think Matt, I think Matt yeah, can work yeah, through yeah. the HDMI selection. That should go away in a second. There we go. All right. um, seamless. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here we are in the ridiculous uh, taxi that Aisha uses for her business. She's promoting it um, by taking part in spectacular events like the showcase. So, sorry. Uh, this is an extension of the, the deep, deep lore of the Aisha's Taxi is Horizon story. That is correct. She is now reaching out to try and promote Aisha's Taxis as the UK's number one taxi yep. franchise. Perfect. And um, and to demonstrate that they're the best, she is doing what exactly? Yeah, racing against the Delta Wing bomber jet. <laughs> Makes um, sense. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I, I now want to ride in this taxi. Yeah. In a mildly modified taxi. Uh, mildly? Yeah. So What's the top speed? It's 260 two, 200 miles mile an hour. hour-ish, yeah. You should be getting near it right now. Um, I'm surprised that these uh, aerodynamics allow it to go that fast. There's some trickery underneath the car, shall we say. It's, this one does make downforce. Yeah. So anyone that's played Aish, the stories uh, should know this car. It briefly appears in that. Uh, this is a V12 powered Ferrari, uh, Ferrari V12 powered car even. Um, about 750 horsepower, slick tires. Yeah, it's like a GT3 car with a taxi body put on top of it. Yeah, you can tell. Sounds vicious. It needs to be to uh, keep up with the jet. And obviously Aisha, feeling the pressure from ride hailing apps, needs to give her her organization at USP that separates it from the competition and she felt that this... Would you prefer to be picked up in a small hybrid or uh, a V12 taxi? Well, I think there's only one answer to that. <laughs> well, I think most people are the hybrid. But, uh, <laughs> I, I'll go for the V12 taxi. Yeah, yeah. you got to just make sure you're well seated before he puts a foot down or you might get whiplash. Oh, don't worry. It's got five-point harness in the bucket seats. <laughs> That's, you know, it's meeting all FAA regulations. Excellent. So it's quite a spectacle. So, see the, uh, still in first place. You're doing okay. I think that... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fast, uh, but not that fast. And we've also turned traction control off. Oh, yes. Earlier on, you had that on, which helps a bit. And this is one of a, a theme of Showcase Remixes. Uh, That's right. Two updates ago, we had the Aisha's Taxi versus the, the Flying Scotsman. Yes, we did. Yes, yep. then we have this one. Um, I assume that there will be further uh, additions yeah. to this narrative line in the future. Yeah, I believe Torben has some ideas in the pipeline. Uh, we'll remain to see what they are, but I believe the taxi will be making an appearance in Eliminator as well, which we'll talk about more in a bit. Hmm, interesting. Aisha's trying to get the, uh, 
It's really going ex- everywhere with it, isn't it? As much exposure really as out possible. There. Yeah, it's uh, obviously, obviously the player invested in this business, so has a, has a stake. <laughs> Yeah, uh, exactly. Stands, stands to, to reap the rewards, no doubt. I'm sure, I'm sure we've gone up the, the payouts you get from the businesses you, to accommodate this. You've got to wonder if the, uh, <laughs> where, where does her marketing budget come from? It's probably the money she took from you. <laughs> <laughs> all the it's taxi fares. And this is where your, your money goes. Yeah, all the passengers that are now being transported around the festival site and the Cotswolds at 260 miles an hour. Right, Pick is currently in second place. He's going to blow it. Well... Oh, yeah, going we'll very, see. very fast. Just in time. That was close. That was very close. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's Taxi for Takeoff. Taxi for Takeoff. How do people play this? It was in spring. Remix? That is in yeah. spring. Make so. sure you've completed the regular showcase first, and you'll be able to unlock that version. All right. Um, we are going to take the first of two. Uh, beautiful photo-based interludes. Uh, this time we asked you guys, or we threw out the theme of, is that a Supra? Thank you to everyone who submitted photos to our call out this time on Twitter. This was an unprecedented response. We had more entries than we've ever had before. So stick around if you didn't see your photo there because we have another load more photos to look at later on in the show. Uh, we are now in our eliminator section of the show and we will soon be doing a new section that is called Alimi Q&A Tour, uh, which means that I have to introduce a new person to the sofa. Mr. Gareth Davies. Hello, Mike. Welcome, welcome to the show. How do you um, Yeah, what have you been playing lately? Uh, I've been playing the DLC for Hitman 2, the uh, bank uh, New York level that was recently added, and a bit of Dragon Quest XI on the Nintendo Switch. And aside from that, a little bit of a game mode called Eliminator. A bit of Eliminator, that's... Tiny bit, yeah. Perfect. A couple of matches. Uh, yeah, Gareth has a, actually a real problem. Uh, he, he, he wakes <laughs> up, he plays Eliminator, he comes to work, he plays Eliminator, he goes home, plays Eliminator. A more Eliminator. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's I, think, I think when he pretended he plays with the games was actually... It was actually just a lie. <laughs> he was just trying to make it sound like he had a, a balanced gaming diet. What's come out recently? <laughs> just quick Google on the release schedule. <laughs> yeah, Hitman, that'll do. Um, uh, before, any, before we jump into Alimi q and we're going to take a moment now to uh, just talk about Eliminator, I think, between us, because uh, we, ana- we released it about one month ago. We did a stream, which you guys will have no doubt seen, and the response has been incredible. Um, you guys have been telling us that you love it, and we have had 
so, so many people playing it. We've had more people playing Eliminator than any of our other multiplayer modes ever. Uh, it's been a, a real, real great success. And more than that, I think it's just a, it's been a really fun, fun way to spend time, as, as Gareth can attest. Uh, and I think we just want to take this moment to, uh, to reinforce that it's not, we're not done with it yet. We are still looking at ways we can improve, expand, always add more fun and add more functionality to it. And Matt, I think you're going to give us a quick summary of what's coming in update 18. And up to 18? Uh, what, for Eliminator? The heavy hitters thing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you changed it from what, how we rehearsed it. Yeah, we've got a new, uh, a new lineup of cars coming into Eliminator mode where we've refreshed uh, the selection of cars. Um, I have a list here, uh, if you want to go through it. One, one for each level, isn't it? <laughs> there is, yeah, apart from the Mini. The Mini remains yes. the same. Uh, so coming in at level two is the Tractor. Number three, the Unimog. Number four, the Mini X-Raid. Number five, the Hummer open top that we saw earlier on. Uh, number six, the Regalia Type D. Number seven, the Warthog. Number eight, the Diberti Wrangler. Number nine, the Funko. And number 10, the Aisha's Taxi, as we mentioned during the- uh, The, the Aisha's Taxi we just saw? That's right. Wow, yeah. okay, cool. And that's, the, the numbers correspond to what level they are as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. As well. Right. yeah. Kind of branding those all under the umbrella of Horizon Heavyweights, I believe. That's it, yeah. They're all heavyweight vehicles that will be appearing in uh, Eliminator mode during the series. So, so how does that work then? Is this a, is it, does it last all, all series long? Yes. Uh, yep, and, uh, and then it'll go away or stick around? Or? Um, TBD, I think, at this stage. I think we'll be looking to see how uh, that change is received by the community and making changes from that. Okay, cool. And they are, they're not replacing any of the current cars, is that right? Uh, I believe they are. No, we're not, I don't think we're taking any out at this point. Okay, well there you they're go. They're just Lawless. new ones being added. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like this segment was supposed to be Torben's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, oh. Torben not here this this week, unfortunately. Um, but we've got much, we've got a lot to say about Torben. So do you stick around? <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of dropped me in it a little bit. the last second. Um, Yes, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've been really paying close attention to all of your activity within Eliminator and we've been seeing who's been playing it a lot, how people have been playing it. It's been really reassuring how many people just hit that play again button at the end. It's just, uh, it's almost everyone is just hit, finishing the game and hitting play again, which is just great. But there is one player who has really stuck out above everyone else. I'm not going to say his name. I don't want to get any targeted harassment or anything like that, but he is a prolific Eliminator player. Uh, he has won, uh, well, probably by now more than, because this will be a slightly old statistic, but he has won over 353 games of Eliminator. 90% uh, of the games he's appeared in, he has made it all the way to the final race. And in two thirds of the games he's played in, he has been in the top three. Uh, this guy is an absolute machine at Eliminator. And uh, I think we can all aspire to be more like him. <laughs> um, because we have our own internal leaderboard at the studio where we all compete to try and see who is the, the best among us, who is the most, who, who can get the most eliminations. Who can and stay in the Illuminati for the longest. Who can become a member of the Illuminati <laughs> and stay there. And I'm delighted to tell everyone that our reigning champ, at least in terms of volume of wins, <laughs> is Mr. Gareth Davies. Yep. Uh, Gareth, how did you do it? Uh, I'll be honest, Mike, I'd like to say it was all skill, but I pretty much brute forced my way to the top due to uh, playing the most number of games. So By while, a factor of about 10. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I have played a lot more games than most people. Uh, so yeah, I've won 22 games, but yes, I have also played uh, several hundred games. Right, so this, I guess, marks the start of a Lemmy q and a -ter. Um, <laughs> Gareth has just uh, queued himself up for a limit. This is a, a real live uh, multiplayer session. Uh, the kind of rules of this are um, that we talk to Gareth and ask him questions for as long as he stays in the game of Eliminator, which might work as a format. We'll find out soon. Um, <laughs> I'm, pleased, I'm pleased to see we're playing in the dead of night, which is... Uh ideal time of day for playing Eliminator. It is, it is. And also I've now I've just now realized that Gareth might not be enjoying this and it and could definitely just throw in the towel at any moment I, and get I, himself yeah. eliminated <laughs> and leave the show. So if that happens, um, I might force him to stay on for another game. Um, <laughs> uh, I may just go on and just completely smash it and win a game. So. We can't make any promises at this stage. I'm expecting, I'm expecting <laughs> you to smash. I've just introduced you as the most successful player in the studio. Uh, we won't talk about your actual win rate, but in, we can talk about in, my win rate. in, in terms of sheer number of wins, you're definitely at the top. I was going to say we have an 8% chance of that happening. Yeah. <laughs> <on the win. laughs> 
<laughs> but it's better than the four percent chance that Tommy Bargains has got. So. Ooh, <laughs> throwing shade wow. around there. Tommy Bargains will be uh, next month's guest on <laughs> Elementary. <laughs> <Grinder, so. laughs> Dusting off his black cap and joining us on stage. <laughs> right, so um, I wasn't paying attention. Have you chosen your start? Like, you haven't yet, have you? No, we just, um, just, waiting, just waiting for the match to start. I have oh, a, right. a favoured starting location. Ooh, that we'll get and to. where is that? Ambleside. Got to be every time. Huh. Any reason for that? Uh, I experience, I think there's quite a lot of potential card drop locations there. Um, I mean, yeah, it is only an 8% win rate, so maybe don't take my advice too, <laughs> <laughs> too much. But yeah, I do generally find there's a decent chance of at least, you know, starting off on a good foot. Because as soon as you said that, I'm like, huh, complex road network with loads of unbreakable walls and buildings. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, like a terrible place for a head-to-head. <laughs> but anyway, you're, 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 you know, this, maybe that's this, why is, this is your moment, Gareth. Maybe so, that's why um, I'm 8% on that one. Ah, so you, you've... you've uh, Deck out your character and eliminate a branded clothing yeah. as well. Yeah, I have I have reached the the, tw the level twenty five of the. Uh, You've gone all in. Thread. Right, Gareth, who are you and what do you do? Uh, so my name is Gareth. I am an associate producer here at Playground Games, uh, which, as I'm sure, many people at Playground Games have asked themselves, what does a producer do? Uh, so our job is to um, take the features like Eliminator from the kind of awesome idea that is on paper from the designers and then work out a kind of schedule of how we can get from that awesome idea into something that people can play uh, in a real game. Cool. And how long have it's you- It's very exciting. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not the most glamorous job, but it is, uh, it is very fun being able to kind of be part of the team and kind of see something develop from this kind of, you know, idea that sounds cool on paper to kind of the real thing that people are playing and uh, hopefully enjoying. And how long have you been a part of the Playground family? Uh, I've been here for nine months, ten months now. Not long at all. No, not long. And uh, where, did we, uh, where did we find you? Uh, I came from a, another studio called Lab 42 Games, which is not as well known as Playground Games, but um, yeah, local to us here in Leamington Spa. Yeah, another another Leamington based studio. Yeah. Represent. Whoop, yeah. Whoop. <laughs> um, and so you've been here ten months, probably long enough to get a a real feel for how, how, how things work here? What's like the main differences between uh, PG and other places where you've worked? Um, it sounds kind of corny to say, but the passion of the people who work here, like everyone is very much sort of pulling in the direction of kind of wanting to make the game the best it can be and kind of going out of their way to make that happen. And we don't always agree on what the correct course of action is to reach that goal, but everyone is sort of very much coming from a, a place of, you know, wanting the game to be the best it can be. Um, and yeah, we definitely experienced So Eliminator was kind of the first thing that I was kind of given responsibility for. And um, yeah, everyone was kind of super passionate about making this, you know, quite um, unusual for us in terms of, you know, a battle royale game is obviously not something that has been done before um, in, in a racing game. Um, and kind of when we first heard about it, it was like, is this going to be a fun thing to play? I know you were very much a believer from the start, but um, yeah. Once it kind of started to take, yeah, yeah, uh, car drop, Ooh. I believe, is the, uh, <laughs> the agreed terminology. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it was really great to kind of see it come together week by week and kind of as bits of it uh, came to life and made little tweaks to kind of improve the experience. And um, we were doing kind of weekly test sessions um, in the studio, kind of every Friday afternoon, we try and get everyone down to play a few games. Um, you know, give their feedback on what they thought of it and um, it was really fun to kind of see like in the later stages of the game as we kind of got down to the final race people kind of gather around the screens of uh, the people who were in the final race and that sort of excitement of you know the final race unfolding and everyone kind of getting involved is really kind of yeah fun. it's uh which i don't know might, that might sound like something that would happen all the time in a game studio but i can i can promise you that that, <laughs> that is a, a unique thing that has never happened to us before where Whole mobs of people have been running around the studio trying to find which player it was that's still yeah. in the game to try and cheer them on. It's, it was, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, it was you know quite a lot of work trying to kind of coordinate these. Like you know, it's up to 72 players and getting everyone kind of down at the right time and available to play and kind of giving their feedback on it all. Um, but everyone was super supportive, of sort of making Eliminate the best thing it can be. And um, I think uh, it's come off pretty well. You know, we're not done yet. Hopefully, we've got uh, other ideas in the pipeline for things that could potentially improve it. But um, yeah, I think what we've come out with has been, yeah, pretty awesome. All right, enough selling yourself. Um, <laughs> where'd you get this gamer tag? It's super weird. 
Uh, my gamer tag is Garthatron, and it was because. <laughs> Uh, so I used to commute to London for work and uh, I was getting my train season ticket renewed one day and uh, so my name, Gareth, was on my season ticket obviously and the guy had to reprint it and I don't know if he misheard me or misunderstood me or there was some miscommunication but he gave me my new ticket, I went and got on the train, sat down and then looked at my ticket and yeah, Garthatron had, had, what had appeared on my ticket um, and I took it back the next day to try and get it reprinted to so my actual name and there was, a, there was a different guy working there that time but said that the first guy had somehow input my name in such a manner that it could never be changed and so I am now forever known for National Rail which is quite difficult when you have to kind of give photo ID when you're showing your season ticket so not <laughs> it feels like that's You'd have to, did you have to go and update your passport to match the, <laughs> <laughs> had to match by the poll change my name <laughs> No, not quite. Well, luckily, I no longer have to commute to London. So, so little does that train operator know that he has ruined your life. Changed, his changed my birth, Garthatron, <laughs> the, the legend of Eliminator, into the world. Yeah. Um, and Gareth, I've been told I need to ask you. Um, have you been told, Mike, or have you chosen to ask me? I feel like it's a bit of both. Um, what's your What's your favourite game of all time? Oh, if I had to had to sort of put, you know, it's not something I give a lot of thought to, but um, probably Final Fantasy VII. If I had mm. to, you know, mm. pick a pick a game, just you know. Big fan of uh, yeah, Final Fantasy. Awesome. Okay, that's not that in itself not controversial. What is weird though <laughs> is that Gareth keeps a constantly updated Excel list of his top 100 video games of all time and updates it seemingly on a near daily basis. I mean. Um, <laughs> Hang on, we're in it. I'm just standing head to head here. All right, uh, this is his exit from the game. Yes, yeah, this is how I get out of this conversation. Uh, yes, I do have a top 100 list of my favourite games, uh, and I tend to look at it when I complete a new game, think, is this game worthy of making it onto the list? Uh, where does it go in the list? Um, yeah, Final Fantasy VII has been holding the top spot for a record. I don't know how many weeks it's been since 1997, but um, it's been doing pretty well. So, um, Maybe the remake in a few months will uh, give it... So go on, give us a rundown. What, what, other, what else is in the top ten? <laughs> well, unbelievably, I haven't actually committed the entire top ten list to memory because it, it does change, but uh, Breath of the Wild, Zelda, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is number two, and GoldenEye N64 is uh, number three. Hmm. I'm a... sure you'll agree. I, I, I have to agree with this. Is that like a... <laughs> <laughs> no, if there's, if there's one thing I've learned from discussing my top 100 list with people, people absolutely do not agree. Uh, <laughs> frequently... Uh, whether I've solicited their feedback or not, tell me that uh, I... Don't lose this head-to-head, -head, Gareth. <laughs> oh, concentrate, concentrate. Come on, come on, <laughs> oh, it's not looking good. Uh, oh, I'm afraid that's the... Tree? No, he's not hitting a tree, he's, he's done me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm afraid that's the end of my... Uh, <laughs> the inaugural Elimin Q&Ator. Elimin q and is over, and I had so many more pressing and embarrassing questions to get onto. I mean, we can play another um, game if you want. Well... I think we're going to have to because because <laughs> we, we haven't we haven't filled the appropriate time slot. So play for a bit more. You went for much longer in rehearsal. <laughs> Funny that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so let's let's let's. I, I think I think the people are really want again, want to know more about this top 100 list because you know it's a bit odd. And uh, <laughs> well, you know, I'm a fan of video games, so I started with uh, sort of you know what was my top top five list, and then it just sort of gradually spun out of control from there. And here we are. <laughs> with From games. top five you, you, to top 100. I mean, it wasn't over. to push it out to top 250 or anything. I mean, I hadn't, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, what, how, when, what was the most recent update to your, uh, your top um, Death Stranding uh, made the cut. Not, not a particularly high entry. I think 70 uh, ish. In, in the 70s, it was. But, uh, I do, have a, I do have a habit of beating a game and putting it a bit higher than perhaps it, and then coming yeah, looking back at it a few months later and think maybe... Recency bias getting yeah, in the way. Yeah, that is, yeah, a, pro that yeah. is a problem with the top 100 of this, but, uh, you know, Death Stranding, very good game. Enjoyed it. So uh, if, if this is really interesting to you guys, you want to be able to scrutinise Gareth's uh, top 100 and then maybe tweet him about it, <laughs> then by all means, shout it in the chat that you want to see it and we'll, we'll make him put it online. Um, <laughs> oh, I might have accidentally... Yeah. So obviously I have to ask Gareth... Um, where is Forza Horizon 4 in your... Uh... Uh, I believe it is in the top 25, I want to say. Yeah, it's definitely high 20s. Did you tell us that in your interview? Uh, I don't, I, th I think I probably wisely kept the top 100 of this <laughs> on the quiet during the interview stage <laughs> before I joined. So who's top, who's, uh, who are we in between in? Uh, um, five, what's, I, what's know, I know you are just ahead of Street Fighter 2 Turbo Edition on the Super Nintendo, which uh, one of the greatest fighting games of all time. Hyper fighting, yeah. Or not? No, no, it's Turbo, turbo Edition, right. the one where they added uh, the four bosses. Right, gotcha. Not gotcha. the base game, yeah. yeah. 
Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're above Street Fighter 2. Yeah, I struggle to remember from my head what we're, what you, you just got, uh, what is just ahead of you. Um, I know Hollow Knight is definitely around that area. Um, I mean, I can see, I, I, I can see how um, how easy it must be for you to take the three games: Street Fighter II, Turbo, <laughs> Forza Horizon 4, Hollow Knight, well, and determine which one is uh, is better than. Well, another therein lies the challenge of maintaining the top 100 list. You've got to, uh, yeah, you've got to balance it in terms of. Uh, how much you enjoyed playing the game, you know, what impact it had on you, all that kind of stuff. All right, so Gareth, you worked on Eliminator uh, more or less from the start up until release. Yeah. And do you want to talk us through what were your like your big wins on Eliminator? What, what was uh, your biggest accomplishments? Um, I'm really proud of how like 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 we've said like in terms of the playtest and how everyone kind of got involved with it. And you know, Battle Royale is not a game mode that is necessarily for everybody. And you know, uh, some people might not have kind of been interested in playing that kind of game over. Everyone was super willing to get involved, give their feedback on it, and I'm glad to say that we won a few people round in terms of uh, people who kind of didn't think the Battle Royale was their kind of cup of tea, but they, they really enjoyed it. Um, some of the stuff like this, the, the loot drone that um, drops down when you, get, when you pick up a card drop, we had a, a lot of fun getting that um, in the game and making it kind of because you know what its actual purpose is in a little behind the scenes sneak preview is uh, hiding the fact that the game is lo unloading the car that you're currently driving and loading the new car. Um, and when we first kind of had Eliminator working on a basic level, it just kind of dipped to black a bit like um, if you roll the car over in the main game, that kind of thing. Uh, wasn't particularly kind of fun or exciting an experience to kind of get an upgrade in that situation. So we did a lot of messing around in terms of wanting to do something that could work in any situation because you, you see that loot drone both when you pick up loot in the world and um, when you win a head to head, which can end kind of all over the map. So trying to arrive at something that was fun and exciting, but also kind of worked with the overall game world was like a real challenge for us to, um, you know, make success of. And yeah, I'm really kind of happy with how it turned out. I think, uh, you know, you see it drop down the kind of uh, confetti cannons going off around it and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of quite cool little gameplay moment. Yeah, it's very satisfying. Um, I think another thing that was, uh, well, satisfied me around Eliminator is, as much as we got on the stream uh, one month ago and announced it to the world, um, <laughs> there were a couple of bugs. Um, a couple of, you it, know. It, came in, it came in a little hot, is uh, probably. Um, but I think one of the things that, uh, well, you uh, were really helped in is getting that first patch out. So a few days after yeah. Eliminator launched, we got out a patch which fixed up almost all of the, of the issues with the mode, to be honest. So including such fun as not being able to challenge anybody to a head-to-head -head <laughs> and having your race set itself outside of the arena, guaranteeing that you will lose. And the, um, the fun situation of sometimes getting stuck on a rock and not being able to reset your car position, which, uh, yeah, several people, I believe your Twitter account got a few tweets about. It uh, did, yes. Probably. People definitely let me know that was a problem. And, and you know, we... We, we knew it. We knew it was an issue, and it was something that we were intending to fix. But it was, yeah. We we basically had seven days between Eliminator coming out and then everyone kind of going away for Christmas and um, <laughs> having to kind of yeah get Perfectly that patch straight. out and uh, yeah um, yeah. Obviously, we didn't want to sort of introduce anything horrendously game breaking and then no one be around over Christmas to fix it. So yeah, that was a a challenging time. But yeah, it was great to kind of get those fixes out and then seeing everyone sort of enjoying it over the Christmas break was really cool. I have to ask, is there any reason tactically why you've just gone into an area with loads of trees and bumpy terrain? Uh, and to no, be honest, I'm virtually no car drops. I'm uh, avoiding um, kind of any sort of running into any other players at the moment. Is the quarry is actually uh, it's a double edged sword. The quarry there are quite a few potential loot drops around it, but um, yeah, it's loot drop. Oh, I did say loot drop. Car drop. Sorry. <laughs> 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 I kind of deserve that. Uh, yeah, so the quarry um, can be a great spot to find some car drops, but equally you can get yourself stuff lost. But luckily, we can reset our car position now, so it's less of an issue when that does happen. Yeah, the quarry is like, it might be my favorite area of the map, just because right. people with poor map knowledge forget it's there. And when you've got a head to head going to the side of it, you just, you're taking the nice long route around, like just- For me, it's- like, edit, edit. Idly, idly going, oh, they don't no need to take any risks whatsoever, because you know, someone else is going to be like straight to the quarry and, and ruin their day. <laughs> For me, it's uh, Edinburgh. When you have the final race and it's ending in Edinburgh, the number of times you see people, they just make a beeline for that, you know, try and make a straight line path to it, and then they just smack into one of those unbreakable walls. That little park with the unbreakable walls around it. Yeah, yeah. with the, the football pitches around it. That bit, bit of map is, uh, yeah, fun times for all involved.
Edinburgh is also a great starting point in the mini. It was really quick around those streets, and there's some good uh, car drops there. It's my uh, go to starting place. Well, you got a couple of people yep. to prey upon. Well, All right, you've we'll got, you, you, do have, you do have an audience, Gareth. So, um, I, <laughs> are, we, are we live on, on the internet? So? We, we are. This, this, is, this is just <laughs> rehearsal, too, don't worry. Um, <laughs> but, but also, please don't swear. Uh, so, I. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as the man who has played more Eliminator than anybody else who I've met, although some stats on our server tells me that, that apparently people do exist who have played more, um, talk us through your main strategies. Like, what are you actually doing now? Because um, it looks like you're going to a terrible area to get stuck in. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that is true. In, the, in this situation, that is what is happening. My general kind of strategy when playing Eliminator is to try and... Uh, Ambleside, like I said, does generally uh, have quite a few card drops in it, so try and get a sort of high-ish level, kind of four or five card early on, um, try and pick off a couple of minis if you can, and then, yeah. I think once you start to reach sort of level seven or eight, that's when you're really kind of in with a decent chance of potentially winning the final race. I know, obviously, though, I've seen people... Uh, Ooh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. Even though it's another level five, it is a it's preferred really level good. five. For me. Yeah, it's probably my favorite level five, this one. Um, yeah, I feel, um, yeah, once you get to kind of level seven, eight is when you've really got like a decent chance. Um, I have seen people winning in the mini. Uh, I am not one of those people. My 22 wins, uh, none of them have occurred in the mini. So that guy has just jumped himself down into the bowl of the quarry, almost certainly going to get stuck. And you've got yourself a free win on a head-to-head. -head. So I have, although I do have to navigate myself to the other side of the quarry first, which is not always the easiest, although this vehicle is uh, Where are you going? one you of the probably make ones. it through. Yeah, he's going to be stuck down there, mate. You've got all the time in the world. You've got time to. <laughs> check, check the map, check, check your phone. Uh, Maybe make an update to the top 100 list. <laughs> if, you, if you win this uh, live uh, game of Eliminator, oh, are you going to push Horizon 4 further off? Straight up. Is that recency bias going <laughs> to kick in? So what's at number 100? I honestly can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, well, what did you have to remember? Oh, actually, no, I do, I do remember. Uh, Death Stranding. It is uh, Mario Rabbids, the, I can't remember what the full name is, the Switch um, XCOM-esque uh, turn-based strategy. Wow. So Mar Mario Rabbids, yeah, so Mushroom, next, next big, something or other. That's, yeah. that's on thin ice, basically. Yeah, next time next, there's a big game release. Next big release. <laughs> when that Final Fantasy VII remake comes out, I'm afraid uh, it might not be long for this world. But for now, it's an honor, it's an honor just to make the list, you know. So uh, I'm sure the developers will be happy to and, and if any of those developers <laughs> are watching live, remember, Gareth updates his list very regularly. You can do an update to your game to push it up his list and reserve yep, I, that place I am happy. in the prestigious <laughs> Gareth Davies top 100 all-time games. I am happy to, you know, oh no, oh no. That was a mistake. And now at least we'll get to see the reset position thing. Yeah, I did there you go. Yeah. There you go. See? <laughs> a, a, month, a month ago, you'd have just lost. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we did have fun during the... So we did a live stream the day after Eliminator came out where we had a bunch of people on the sofa uh, playing Eliminator and we did have somebody... Uh, <laughs> we joked beforehand, what, what happens if someone gets their car stuck and they need to go, oh, no. What are the chances of that happening? But sure enough, it happened. Um, Straight away. Yeah. yeah and we, I, we, I, I, bl I believe I said you wait while it happens. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, yeah, you were, you were right. Um, yeah, we, we knew we kind of had the update uh, coming back. We, we were... I mean, it was touch and go whether we were going to get it ready just in time for Christmas, but uh, yeah, made it happen. And uh, I think we can all agree Eliminator is all the better for it. <laughs> well, you mentioned um, a specific version of Street Fighter earlier on, didn't you? I on did, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Edition. Yeah. Do, do different versions of the same game occupy spaces in your list? I mean, Street Fighter 2, I think that's the only, the only entry that it's, uh, it's made on it, because that was the one that I kind of grew up playing. But um, yeah. Well, what about Final Fantasy? Like the oh, I mean, that's... And the remake? Oh, I mean, that, I mean, that remake is more or less a new game at this point, right? And like, it, it doesn't really look much. You know, if it was just a, a HD remaster... Where do you draw the line, though, Gareth? This well, is, it's, diffi it's, it's, it's difficult, Matt. You know, it's, just be uh, careful you don't sort any Microsoft own franchises <laughs> in this, please. Just <laughs> I'm, I'm not at all. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know where the line is drawn. Uh, you know, it's an, it's an evolving situation. The list is, is never, uh, never fully done. But, um, oh, I've got level two here. Let's hope that I'm heading in the right direction. Rip. I'm not. F's in chat, please. F's in chat. Yep, so. <coughs> Beautifully executed 3.10. <laughs> yeah, this is not looking good That's for what me. Balls are for, right? <laughs> and now, because we're down to one of the final shrinks, it's not going to be a very long way, because unfortunately, the bug where uh, 
the final destination could be outside the arena is no longer a thing, so it is definitely going to be <laughs> <laughs> within the current quite small circle. Which this could be quite close. You're going to be doing, he's probably going to be struggling to make 100, so I think there's, there's room here for you to, to just about rein that in. Especially, it looks like he might be going through a body of water. Through that water, you should be better. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, rip. Oh, rip. Look at all the Fs. Here, Sorry, here, guys. Yeah, here lies Gareth Davies. <laughs> so, as, as he said at the start, he, whilst having the most eliminated wins in the studio, it is purely it is a, brute war force. Of, a war of attrition, <laughs> brute force my way to the top of this. So. And there ends our first Congratulations. episode of Olympic q &Ata. Congratulations uh, to uh, Hot Rod Chick 83. Yeah, Hot Rod Chick. Yeah, well done. Um, and Gareth, you are, you're now banished. I will you will never, never return to the sofa. You will never return to the sofa uh, ever again, unless you're working on some content that we need somebody to talk about. So, um, <laughs> Which I might be, but you know. But, be, but, but, but until busy. that point, you are, you are fully banished and, <laughs> uh, and may, now, may now leave. Um, and while Gareth is leaving us, before we get on to the final section of the show, let's take a look at the final section of the photo competition that you guys entered for on Twitter with the theme, is that a Supra? Welcome back, and I want to give a huge thank you to everybody who submitted photos to our Twitter photo competition uh, with the theme, Is That a Supra? Uh, honestly, when you guys are submitting these things, there's so much creativity in there. It really does inspire us to keep making all this great stuff for you guys to enjoy. Uh, I'm now joined on the sofa yet again by Chris Phillips and Matt Pickering. Guys, uh, Chris, what was your favorite photo? I actually really like the one by Is That a Supra? Um, you got you got to love the original Fast and Furious uh, mm. livery, and mm. also just that game tag. And this game tag is easy to remember yeah. in this particular scenario. Yeah. Uh, Pickers? Yeah, there was one uh, by I think the game tag was Knight Rider, where the the super was in black uh, in an autumn scene. Looked really good. There you go. Ah, oh, nice, nice. Right. Night train. That was it. Um, shall we take a look at the new cars yep. in the series 18 update? Which one do you want to go for first? Um, well, everyone's well, going to want the Hurricane. Yeah, my, mi my mix of senses are telling me that all the guys in the chat want to see the uh, Hurricane Performante. Performante. So, Hummer? So, yeah, let's take a look at the Hummer. Um, <laughs> all right. I was joking, <laughs> yeah. because isn't. Here all we right, go. Let's look at the Hummer. <laughs> <laughs> no, we save the best for last, right? So, yeah, we've got the open top version of the Hummer that's uh, already in the game. Uh, so, this is the 2006 one. So, this is when they updated it to a 6.6 .6 litre. Duramax engine, uh, so it's 300 horsepower, 5 something per pound of torque, which would make most cars fast, but when it weighs 3.4 tons or 7,600 pounds, 
that's wrong, don't shoot me, <laughs> don't do pounds. Uh, it makes it quite slow. Uh, so it's it, not the quickest. It's not the quickest. It's also gigantic, which is what, perfect for going the, down um, narrow bridge roads. What's the fuel economy like? Terrible. Um, I would imagine it can't even get into double figures. Um, oh dear. Yeah. It's so wide. You could fit like four people abreast in that. But you can only fit four people in it total. Yeah. Because uh, it's only got four seats. Because it has a gigantic transmission. You could fit another four in the in the. Oh, in, in, the, in the pickup bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And you could just sit on the like. There's a bit between the two rear seats that's just a giant table. Essentially, you could you could sit on that. Mm. Really cool cockpit details as well. I think uh, yeah. off, often with these, uh, well, yeah. Look at the space. Between. Atypical production cars. I guess just so like, you can fit a squad of soldiers in there and, and a picnic. Yeah. <laughs> in this <laughs> in this civilian version of the car. Yeah. I I really like that kind of late '90s, early millennia switch gear. Um, like the big, the big buttons. What's the green thing? I don't know. And the Hummer <laughs> is available, content. as we noticed earlier. You can get this in summer, so starting from yep. Thursday in the Schummer Nights, Schummer Nights Championship. Championship yeah. Schummer Nights. That's not a typo. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting rained on at the moment. Is that the snorkel on the front there? Like, could you fit a snorkel? Uh, the air I would imagine that probably is the air intake. I, I don't know though. Um, Hummers are not my, my strong point of car knowledge. I see. All right, should we go? What next? Next up. Oh, we is there a uh, Torben Tuesday thing that we need to discuss? Here? Oh, yes. 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 So, guys, this is uh, why we mentioned I think uh, Torben isn't here. That's because he's on the naughty step. Um, <laughs> because of really, Torben Tuesday was a bit. It was a bit unfair on you guys. There was, it was very I, difficult this time I, around. I think esoteric, in fact, esoteric isn't even the word. I think there <laughs> probably is another word that um, either doesn't yet exist in the English language. Maybe we'll call it the Torben. Um, <laughs> a, a, a challenge so weird and obscure that... Nobody got it. Nobody got it and no one ever really had a chance. So the clue for this one was, um, I think you wrote the number 11818 on the whiteboard, which is the number of them that were built. Yeah. So. Shame on you guys for not getting that, right? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I took, a, I took a day off on the Monday, which is when they shoot the Torben Tuesday, so I wasn't there to be like, hey guys, this is terrible. Um, <laughs> so it'll be better next time, I promise, I promise. Anyway, next car, let's go. Um, which one? Should we actually give them a Performante? Yes, I think yeah. we should not troll. And <laughs> so yeah, this one, uh, as we said earlier, massive fan request, uh, massive community request, this one. Um, We've been trying to get it in the game for quite a while now. Um, mm -hmm. So, well, I know I know it's been uh, appearing in request lists for uh, several months since it's existed, really. Since it's, yes, yeah, yeah. 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 I think uh, I think about 15 minutes after it was revealed, where yeah. we were getting asked why it wasn't in the game yet, and well, it takes a little while. Sorry, it takes, takes longer than 15 <laughs> minutes to build a car. Um, so yeah, this is the track version of the Huracan. Um, so it's 40 kilos lighter, I think 30 horsepower more right. out of its absolutely glorious V10. Um, this really is one of the best engines in the world, I think. The noise it makes is spectacular. Um, and it has a, some rather trick aerodynamics on it called uh, Lamborghini Arla, which stands for, Whoa. I tried this earlier, um, <laughs> Aerodynamica Lamborghini Ativa. Um, which is essentially, it's a passive active aero which uses valves that kind of go through the car um, to stall the rear wing and to drop the pressure off of the front splitter to reduce drag. Um, but the cool thing is, because it's two separate ducts, when you're cornering and you turn in, they'll uh, keep the inside one uh, closed in high drag mode, which creates, you have more drag on one side of the car mm. and that rotates the car in. So like an air brake? Yeah. Uh, so they're calling that active uh, the aerodynamic uh, vectoring uh, is the term they're giving it. And it, it, do, it does work. This thing is one of the quickest Lamborghinis ever made. It, I think when it was released, it was now being beaten by the Aventador SP. Mm -hmm. So this will do sub seven minutes of the Nürburgring, which is yeah. one, one of uh, only a handful of cars capable of that at the moment. Um, it's a very special car. Wow. Uh, I love the cockpit. I love the, uh, the stripe down the side there and the Italian and flag. Tricolore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had a little go on the interior view, but um, in this camera view in particular, you can just see that crazy dash. Yeah, what's the name of that material, Chris? Yeah. 
it's the carbon fiber material. Is that, or is that, is it, do you mean on the dash or is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the suede so. Alcantara yeah, type. Alcantara. Yeah. Is it Alcantara? Yeah. yeah. Um, it probably would be Alcantara, yeah. And then that carbon fiber, I think, is something they um, initially did with the Sesta Elemento, which is like, uh, like crushed up bits of carbon fiber, then re resined uh, to, to look like that. And it's got this oh, really I nice see. kind of marbled effect, mm. um, which is very unique uh, to this car. And the Performante, available in autumn, so in a couple of weeks from now. And you, you can get this for free just by completing 50% uh, of this stuff in the festival playlist for autumn. Um, That's yeah, right. It's cool. Uh, you guys have been asking for it. Here it is. Um, shall we? What's next? Shall we have a look at the Toyota A86 next? Or the Sprinter Torino? The, sprint, the, the car with many names. Yeah. Um, let's take a look. To which, while it's loading, I have facts about its names. Go, go ahead. So there, there's uh, essentially two versions of this car. You've got the Torino and the Levin. Torino is Spanish for thunder, and Levin is Middle English for lightning. Middle English being a version of the English language from between 1150 and 1500. So there you go. Until Toyota resurrected, it was basically just found on Old pub UK, UK pub time. Yeah, yeah. curly text. <laughs> uh, so this thing's super iconic. It's got many names, as you said. It's Hachiroku, it's A86, it's uh, Torino, it's Levin for the notchback version of it. Um, it's iconic is what it is. It's, uh, it's a movie star, it's star of uh, manga comics, all sorts. Um, it's a tofu delivery car, um, <laughs> uh, but it's pr probably uh, between its most famous either tofu delivery or uh, for the very early days of drifting, mm -hmm. um, being a lightweight rear-wheel drive car, it's kind of on the lower end of the market, uh, not much was rear-wheel drive when this came out, so it was an affordable rear-wheel drive car and it just so happened to have a really good chassis, limited slip differential and an, a pucker of an engine in the uh, 4 AGE which in stock form, I think, revs to 7,800 RPM and modified, they've been known to go past 10,000, uh, making good power. Stocked at about 130. So drifting in our game, not the easiest. Uh, if Matt wants to I'll, try uh, I was heading to a drift zone, the one in Ambleside, just around this corner, so. All right, well, w Matt is one of the finest drifters. Oh, here we go. In, uh, <laughs> in Playground Games. So taking this stock drift icon, um, we can all we can all cheer him on as yeah. he bosses this drift zone. <laughs> Back to three star score. So oh, you should easily get three stars in this, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. With it stock as well. Get any excuses in? <laughs> Actually, I'm not going the right way, am I? No. This is no. Go left yeah, down here. Is the rejection down here? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, you've gone completely the wrong way. Never mind. Go over the river. What a shame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you can't show off your drifting now. <laughs> We could do the speed zone instead. Which well, there you go. Look at this. Look at this car getting eight, going 85 miles an hour. Ooh. 85 whole miles an hour. Wow. Nearly enough to, to go back in time. Can we three-star yeah. that? No. 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 Okay. Yeah. Are you not going to give us a drift zone? Are you actually just? Have you, have you intentionally? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I'm not going. No, let's not force it. Let's not force yeah. it. it was, you were only no, going. You were only going here, is there? You were only going to embarrass yourself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's, uh, um, I've done the, tr that the Truno is available in spring in the Is That a Supra Championship. That's correct. Um, slightly confusing naming there because the championship is called Is That a Supra because you're going to race a Supra in it, um, but you will win the Truno. That's correct, yeah. Or the A86 or the whatever other names you want to call it. Uh, what so are we looking at now? Finally, what? this is the Porsche 356C uh, Emery Special. Um, so Emery um, have been doing um, I don't want to call them resto mods. Um, they kind of restore old Porsches, um, but also do a new modern take on it. Um, and this is one of them. I think they've done over 100 now. Um, they're absolutely beautiful. They they look like a stock Porsche. Like I don't think you could look at them and, and figure out without looking at a, a stock 356 what they've changed because they mm. keep very much the original design ethos of the car. Um, they also, a, a standard fitment is um, the Emery Motorsports engine, which is a, it's the original flat four, but tuned up to 220 horsepower. Um, so it's a two point. What's that porcelain vase on the dash? I don't know. I think it's an air freshener. Yeah. Amazing. I hope it is. I hope it's like a potpourri pot. <laughs> <laughs> so each, each one is unique, hence the uh, potpourri pot. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> they, they got quite far through production with this commitment to making yeah. everyone unique that they had to find new things yeah. to attach. I mean, Porsche may have fitted that, you never know. Uh, but yeah, um, each one's unique uh, to the owner. Um, and I believe the Torben Tuesday for oh, yes. this car. Yeah, do you want to reveal that one? So um, <laughs> there was a picture of the Dutch police on the whiteboard, I believe, um, which was they bought some of these cars. So there you go. Um, <laughs> yep, there you go, guys. Slap on the wrist for not getting that. The, uh, um, the Performante was the hardest one, I think, where it had a, a weight to power ratio, not even the power to weight ratio, which is the more common way around of doing it, of 2.15 kilograms per horsepower. Um, that was the clue for that one. I think most people did get the AE86 because we capitalized the D, D on the yeah, initial D. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. That, that, not the best Torben Tuesday. We, we, we will <laughs> we'll be better in future. Um, um, so there's three levels of trim of these, aren't there? They've got the, uh, the Emery Special and the RS and the Outlaw. Yeah, so then goes Outlaw Special, RS. Yes, and the RS right, is yeah. the newish one they showed off, uh, would have been summer last year, I think, which has, um, oh, is it the twin turboed one? I, I, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's very special. Though. They do some 911s as well. Yeah. Um, it's uh, they're awesome. They're like, they're, each one is built differently, like to the owner's request. So yeah, this one's got a towing bar. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right, um, we are quickly running out of time, so I'm going to run through some updates and fixes. Uh, Matt, feel free to just keep looking at this car and driving around. Sure. I'll run through the things that you can look forward to in the Series 18 update that we haven't already gone over. So we have fixed an issue where the action bar was not appearing in free roam over the player's car. That's a little chap that lets you do a head to head. Um, we improved loading time when loading into the Eliminator. Cool. Uh, fixed an issue where traffic cars would not always appear in co-op street race events. So uh, they would appear in single player, but occasionally would not show up in co-op. So. That's been fixed now. Uh, improve the loading time when upgrading a car in the Eliminator, probably the best fix in there. So when you grab one of those car drops, uh, you'll get into it that much faster. Yep. Uh, increased the uh, Eliminator Arena boundary audio. So that's the sound that the wall makes and it gives you some positional audio. So if you've got the wall behind you and it's moving, you can get an idea of where it is uh, based on positional audio, assuming you're not on some odd antiquated mono setup. Um, <coughs> And we've fixed an issue in custom controller or keyboard layouts would prevent a user from getting an upgrade in the, in the Eliminator, which sounds pretty bad. Uh, fixed additional instances of players not being able to challenge others to a head-to-head -head whilst in Eliminator. And we have massively improve, improved the loading times when booting into the game for the first time when you have all of the DLC installed on PC. So some players are having like a really long load um, because of the install footprint, which has now been fixed. We have a couple of minutes left to take a few questions from the guys on the Mixer chat. So haven't had any prep to read these, so. Excellent. Here it goes. <laughs> right. Uh, hey Tom, will the Eliminator come to Fortune Island and Lego Valley? Uh, the answer to that one is maybe. Um, we are trying to work out, there's some logistical issues which currently would prevent us from doing that, which we're trying to work our way through. So that one is a hard maybe, uh, but definitely not a yes. <laughs> um, or no. Or no. Uh, hey Tom, will will we uh, still be getting new body kits and Rocket Bunny Liberty Walk? Every Q and A, I get this one. <laughs> uh, yes, at some point in the future, we're hopefully going to bring some new body kits. Great, that's a good answer. Cool. Uh, hey Tom, any idea if we'll be getting any new Peugeots? Yes. Uh, yes, in the next few series, I think there's a Peugeot coming up. Cool. One of my favorites as well. Actually. Are there plans yeah. for an offline eliminator mode? No. Um, no, we are not currently investigating making eliminator an offline mode. Um, will anything goes come back to online racing? I haven't got anything planned for that at the moment. No. Um, yeah. I guess that's a, a maybe, but probably not. Um, if that that isn't, to be honest, something that we've seen asked for a lot. So uh, I think we'd have to probably hear a bit more noise that that's the thing that people are missing before we made action there. Um, will former Horizon characters from earlier games ever make a return to the series in Horizon Stories? Um, we we'll get Ben back, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. We're investigating if we can get some uh, Horizon slash Playground fringe characters to appear in Horizon stories. Um, maybe a certain Mr. Bargains might uh, make his way <laughs> there at some point. Um, there isn't anything to confirm at this point. Um, and in terms of characters from previous games, such as Ben Green, Ashley, uh, Warren, Dak, Dak. Um, no plans right now. So that would be, if yes, it'd be a long way off, I suppose, is the answer for that one. But they're not currently in our plans. Hey, Tom, will there ever be a showcase remix that will let you choose cars yourself? Ah, probably not. Um, we could showcase remix, uh, we could probably a, not. We could potentially have a vehicle select. Yeah, um, with like a choice of a few, yeah. maybe. Um, yeah, um, one, one for us to take away, I think. Yeah, we can think about that one. That's a, it's actually a good suggestion, so it's one we, one we can think about, one we might be able to do something with and not currently planned. Um, what's the current world record for most Eliminator wins in a single round? Oh, sorry, most head-to-head -head wins within a single round of Eliminator? And the answer is 13, which is pretty breathtaking, given Close. how long a game lasts and how long it takes to do, an, do a head-to-head. -head. So, um, when will Torben be on Elimi Q&A Tour? Um, well, I've kind of committed Tommy Bargains to being on it uh, in the next update, so we'll have to throw Torben under the bus in the one after that, I think. Um, <laughs> but we should give him Torben Tuesday-esque things to solve while doing the Eliminator. That is a great idea. Um, so, guys, when we do get Torben on, which I'm now, now Chris has shared this idea, we'll be in two <laughs> series' this time. Um, <laughs> Let's have you guys make the challenges that Torben will have to complete uh, while still yes, while this taking is part such a in the game idea. of uh, Eliminator. This so is series great. series twenty that will be. All right, uh, we are just out of time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, don't go anywhere because Forza Monthly from over in Seattle will be starting in just a few minutes' time with a few very special guests, including uh, me and Chris, who will be joining them via the power of the internet uh, because they've got a blizzard or something going on there and their other guests can't make it. Uh, but there's lots of stuff being shown. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> uh, there's lots to, get, lots to see there, so don't go anywhere. Stick on, stick on the Forza YouTube channel, stick on the Forza Mixer channel, watch on Twitch, subscribe everywhere. Thanks very much, guys. Goodbye. See ya. See ya. Play it on Xbox One. Yeah.